Oh, John, you said it yourself. There's always a price to pay. October, I want to try and cram some more spooky sort of stuff into the month before it's over. So uh, I got my hands on the DC animated film, Constantine, City of Demons. Um, this one was one I had been aware of. It had kind of fallen off my radar, but then it popped up as something that I could get through, uh, through Netflix um, DVD. Yes, I do still use that. <laughs> I might be the only one, but um, I got it, I watched it, and it's really good. First of all, we've got Matt Ryan back as Constantine. He really is taking ownership of this role to an impressive degree. It's really, it's really fun to see, uh, you know, somebody just own it like, to, to the degree that he does. And... If, if anyone has been following his version of Constantine, whether it was through the TV show that got a season, his appearances on um, Legends of Tomorrow, his appearance in Justice League Dark or whatever, not only is it super consistent, this actually ties into some specific stuff that has been brought up um, over time. I mean, I'll just say it. If you ever wondered exactly what happened in Newcastle, uh, which has been referenced pretty much since uh, Matt Ryan took the part, well, you can find out what happened in Newcastle. And it's not pretty. But I mean that in the best way. This was really, really good. And so, aside from, from Matt Ryan coming back and, and doing the voice. First of all, it's just great voice work across the board on this. The animation is solid. And I think it's... I'm really hesitant to say that the animation quality is getting better again, because um, I've said, because I've been, I've been following DC animated movies for a long time, and the animation quality did dip a fair bit in the last few years. And by animation quality, what I mean is how much characters jump from pose to pose. Like you lose the fluidity because they're doing fewer frames of animation, because doing more would be more expensive. And that had dipped in recent years. I didn't feel that nearly as much here. I don't want to go so far as to say that the animation quality is actually higher here than elsewhere. I honestly think that just the design and the feel of this world and these settings just kind of covers that weakness a bit more. I, and, and I mean, if only for a lack of point of reference, like I always really notice when, say, Superman and Batman's animations are not fluid because I've seen fluid animation for these characters. Not so much Constantine and definitely not for, you know, these kinds of monsters and demons and whatnot. I'm used to seeing those in more... I, you know, things like anime uh, and, um, you know, until, and when I say anime, I mean like original Vampire Hunter D, Wicked City, you know, these, these things that had a tendency to cut a few corners, but you got away with it because, well, you were seeing something you didn't see elsewhere. And I think this might have that going for it. Um, so again, I don't want to say with certainty that the animation quality is better, but it feels better. I think that's a that's a, that's an offshoot of the of the production design of it though, and uh, story wise, um, he is brought in by a friend of his, uh, Chaz, who did appear. I think I'm pretty sure that was him who was in the in the Constantine series. But he's a he's a recurring character in most incarnations of Constantine. Uh, Chaz brings Constantine in uh, after not having even spoken to him for a very long time because if you know anything about John Constantine, you know that being his friend is, uh, that's just inviting trouble. So he seeks Constantine's help because his daughter is in a coma and Chaz is suspecting that there's something else at play. And John very quickly discovers that, yeah, there 
absolutely is. And what unfolds from there, I'm, I'm not going to lay too much about. I am going to talk some spoilers at the very end, but I'll give you a warning before I get there. But it involves uh, going to Los Angeles. It involves a heck of a lot of demons. It involves the usual mixture of religious points of reference that I love that Constantine does. So you've got demons that are ha are very biblical in nature. You have references to voodoo. You've got uh, Aztec lore. You've got all this stuff. And it, it, it's, it's also one of the things I like about something like Hellboy, basically saying every religion and every superstition is valid and they can be used, they even be used against each other. Like, I, I kind of love that as a, as a, as a whole general premise and, and how things work. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure this was rated R. This one feels more appropriately rated R than uh, usually happens with the DC animated. Now, it's still, you know, it's still rated R in some of the, I was going to say superficial, in some of the sophomoric ways that things tend to be rated R. There's a little bit more swearing, there's a lot more blood, but honestly the whole feel of the whole, of the story as a whole feels more mature, and I don't mean mature in, you know, the ramped up sexuality and, and violence way, I mean mature in that this is about adult characters dealing with, you know, heightened demon, but at the same time very adult problems and the and a big part of that has to do with there's no easy out to this there aren't clear-cut oh here's what we do and then everything will be fine there are lasting consequences to things there are sacrifices that have to be made to get to even have a shot at a positive result and there's no guarantee that it's even going to work even if you do pay the price so there's with all of that it's it's the much less degree of certainty of success and the basic guarantee that success will still come at a cost. So that, and that vibe permeates the whole movie. And that is just a much more mature feel to have than you usually get in the DC animated movies. And I really appreciated that quite a lot. Um, even aside from Matt Ryan, the voice work is great. The demons, especially. There's this one demon that, that like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna miss words. There were certain parts of this that did turn my stomach a little bit. Not because it's like so graphic that I couldn't watch at it, but I'm like, I'm watching it and it's and it's just, it's not that it's super graphic, it's just framed and set and moodily set up and just the right way, and it evoked just this level, oh, and like the concepts of some of the stuff that you see, particularly when it comes, because there's extended sequences of demons torturing humans. And this could have been completely gratuitous. This could have been completely, yeah, 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 you're just doing this because you can, because you got an R rating. But it it is done really well, and it adds, again, to the sense of nobody wins you can't win not really and it really builds that up amazingly well and there are uh, i was gonna say something else. now i'm gonna save that for spoilers um i really i really only have one substantive complaint about this and that is that there is one character there's a um, i'm not gonna explain quite what their deal is but basically there's a body hopping character who uh, gets introduced about midway through and, you know, communicates with John through a couple of different bodies and then has an extended period in the body of a woman who is really over-sexualized. Like, and it wouldn't bother me so much if, like, that vibe had come off even a little bit in any of the other bodies. And, like, I get that you know, the the other bodies were male or there was one that was a kid. Definitely don't do it with that. But I'm just saying that it feels like, oh, now that this being is possessing a woman, let's get stupid over the top sexy with it. I'm like, why? Why? why what, what was the point of that? And it, and it was so extreme and there have been so basically zero hints of that as a character element prior to that, that it really, that 
felt gratuitous. Like the torture scenes didn't feel gratuitous, but this felt gratuitous and it kind of annoyed me. Um, and actually it, it's compounded because later on there's, um, there, there's a moment with that character um, in a male body sort of gives Constantine a slight kiss and Constantine kind of, Ugh! and that annoyed me um, because Constantine in the comics is canonically bisexual and like I'm waiting, I'm not actively annoyed yet but I am still kind of waiting for that to be properly confirmed in, you know, the Matt Ryan version of Constantine. And that, to, to not only not get it, get a confirmation, but to have like him sort of revile a little bit, that, it just felt, it just felt like a no homo bro, no homo moment and I'm like C come on now to be fair I'm probably um putting more weight on that than it's deserved because like the 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 when the character is possessed the man that's being possessed that that plans to kiss on Constantine is, is also old and you know Constantine is like you know I don't go for the wizened thing and so like you can make the argument that he's actually turned off because this person is so old who kissed him but if that's what was meant, I wish somebody in the room, some writer, somebody, had stopped and gone, you know, guys, this could be interpreted um, badly in terms of, you know, how this character is and the fact, and, you know, it matters to some people that, you know, there's this element to his character and what we're doing with this gag, it could be read as negating that. Maybe don't do it. So either they... I was going to say either they did it on purpose or they did it, but I, I, they probably didn't do it on purpose. They did it without, they, and I hate running into this because it annoys me so much and probably more so than it should, but they, they had a joke and they didn't think through the implications of it. And that just annoyed me because again, John Constantine, if he doesn't get confirmed as bisexual in the fourth season of um, Legends of Tomorrow, that that will actively start annoying me. But um, I'm I, yeah, that that annoyed me because I'm still kind of waiting on it with this guy. But that's that's really kind of it. Aside from these moments tied to this one body jumping character, who is not an otherwise bad character, and the concept's kind of interesting with what's going on with that person. But like these couple of things that happen, just uh. but that's really it. Like I said, the 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 weight and the darkness of it, and it's not like, you know, I'm broody and damaged and oh, the world is dark. Like, no, it's just you look around and go, man, there is not a lot of light in the world, is there? It's just feels like that. And it delivers it really well. I'm going to get into the spoilers a little bit because I want to talk specifically about the ending and about some of the things that it made me feel about the ending. So that's your, that's your last warning. I recommend this, especially if you like the character of Constantine. Go see it. Getting into spoilers. I choked up at the end of this movie because there's the sacrifice that happens. So on the off chance that you haven't seen the movie yet and you're watching the spoilers because you don't intend to see the movie or you're just curious, you don't care about spoilers, whatever. They are able to save Chaz's daughter. But Constantine engages a spell that requires a sacrifice, requires a sacrifice of love. And what that means is he funneled all the love that his daughter and his daughter's mother had for him, for Chaz, into this spell and used it up. Which means their love for him is gone. And they don't remember him. The mother just remembers some one night stand, doesn't remember who it was with, and his daughter has never known her father. 
So that got me initially. And then there's another moment after that where Constantine tells him, you know, that wasn't enough. I had to feed more into this spell than just that. And I had to feed it us. Your love for me. At the end of this conversation, you're not going to remember me. Because I had to feed that into this spell too. And the loneliness of that, that really hit me. And it's something of it's something about because Constantine is when done right, he's a really well balanced character because he is, you know, he's got a swagger and he's got a cockiness and he's got a devil may care facade, but he bears so much guilt for things both that he's done and things that he was just in in the proximity of and he feels some responsibility for and to see someone like that willingly isolate themselves further and yeah you know you can make an argument he did it you know, to save this girl's life, but I don't think that that's all that was going on. He also did it to punish himself. He knew that he had this guy in his life who loved him, and I don't think he thought he deserved that. And that's not to say he didn't want it, but he didn't... Not only did he sacrifice Chaz's love for him, for him, he did not sacrifice his love for Chaz, which means he is going to remember his best friend who now has no idea who he is and he can never reconnect with and he can never talk to again. He did this sacrifice of love in a way to make it as brutal on himself as possible. And I have been watching these animated DC movies for a long time. And I don't think I had any that choked me up before. I've had, you know, some get me, you know, really excited. Some get me energized. I've had some um, creep me out, like in a good way. But... I don't, I don't think I've gotten, you know, that lump in the throat from one of these before. So, I mean, I, yeah, I wouldn't have called that. And I certainly wouldn't have called it with this one. I mean, I was looking forward to this, but I did not expect to be touched by this. It's a really really good film with a couple of flaws that I really wish weren't there but it's really good I think honestly it might be the best um piece of Constantine media outside of the comics to date yeah so if this is a character that intrigues you at all or you know one who you've you've liked from the comics and have really been waiting for them to do right watch this I think this does it right. And I'll wrap up on that note. So, Constantine, City of Demons. What are your thoughts on it? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. A whole bunch of stuff to do because there's buttons and there's links, including one to my Patreon, if you're feeling generous. Um, but you know what? If you're not, don't sweat it too much because remember, folks, you are the council and I just run the meetings. Until next time, this council is adjourned.